If you're looking to create your thumbnail images for your YouTube videos using your Android device, then in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to do it using the best Android thumbnail app right now. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help entrepreneurs and business owners amplify their business and brand with video. If you're new here, then make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Now we all know that smartphones are an awesome mobile video creation device, and with the right apps, you can easily create your YouTube thumbnails on your Android smartphone or Android tablet as well. So this means that you can actually shoot, edit, and upload and release your YouTube videos without leaving your Android device. So right now we're gonna run through exactly how to create your YouTube thumbnail images on Android and to get it done quick and easy. And once we're done, I'll also hook you up with our free step-by-step -step guide that you can download to level up your smartphone video game next time you're shooting on your Android. All right, so first off, the apps. Now we tested an absolute ton of them. There are so many out there, things like Canva, things like Pixel Lab, Thumbnail Maker, Pixomatic, and really the list goes on. Now what you can definitely create thumbnail images in these apps is really comes down to the feature set and how easy it is to control and move everything around and get creative with your thumbnail creation, but also while keeping the simplicity there so that you can do it fast and easy. Now while Canva seems to be a really popular option for creating thumbnail images on your Android device, our top pick right now actually goes to Pixel Lab. And that really comes down to, as I said, the feature set and the ease of use. It is an amazing app. Now one really quick tip before we jump into the walkthrough showing you how to use Pixel Lab is if you're gonna be creating thumbnail images where you're in them. So you've got a photo of you, then definitely add this into your filming process or plan this out. What most people do is they'll try to find a freeze frame or a frame grab from their completed video. Something in there where they're mid-sentence or got kind of a half smile. I would strongly recommend that while filming, either before or after, you just pose for a few different photos. So smile, point at stuff. Off. Put your hands up, pull some silly faces. Give yourself some options so that when you're actually creating your thumbnail images, it's so much easier to get a clean image out and something that you're happy to use than to try and find one buried in your completed video somewhere. So that's a really handy tip and it's gonna save you a heap of time. So now for the walkthrough. Okay, so this is the first thing you'll see when you open up Pixel Lab. You can see there's a heap of templates and things that you can use down the side, but this is the area that we're going to be working in. Now you can see straight out that we are not in the right aspect ratio. This is currently a square. We want it at 16 by nine or widescreen to match the correct size for YouTube. So we'll come up here in the top right corner. Let's choose image size. So what you wanna make sure here is that your aspect ratio is 16 by nine. And how you can do that is either come down to the custom preset here and choose YouTube thumbnail and that will enter the correct width and height for you. Or if you wanna create a higher resolution or a higher quality thumbnail, then you can also manually set this to 1920 by 1080. So either one of those two will be fine. I like to do it at the higher resolution just so there's more data and information there if I'm gonna repurpose this thumbnail to be used elsewhere. So we'll hit okay. You can see now that our canvas is widescreen. So because the thumbnail images we've got have me in them, so I've got a photo that I've already taken or a screen grab I've already taken, I'll come up to the plus button here and let's choose import from gallery, pick the photo there. And here you just wanna make sure that down on this side bit here, that 16 by nine is the ratio that you're going to be using. So it's widescreen. Then come down and hit the tick and that image is now bought in. Now we can scale it up by pressing on this circle here and we can move it around and reposition it so we can make it a bit bigger than we want to move it off to one side or off to the other side, somewhere around here, maybe even a little bit bigger, so make it a bit bigger. So they're able to move me off to the side. Okay, so now that we've got our background image in place, we can actually lock it so that it's not gonna be moved around. So if we come over here to the layers up here, you can see that that is on its own layer there. So if we hit the little padlock, then we know that if I tap on this and move around, it's not actually going to move that around. Now you can always come back and unlock it if you wanna make adjustments to it, but at least for now, while we're done with that for this first pass, then it's not going to move around. So now we wanna add in some text. So we'll come over here to the plus and choose text. This is our text here, so we can tap on that, move it around. Obviously it doesn't look very good yet. So let's start out by editing the text. So if we come over here to edit, 
Let's make this how to edit. Done. Okay. Now over this side here, we've got all the rest of the options to make it bigger. So we can go to size, we can scale it up, how to edit, probably something like that. Right, we can keep coming down. Let's start with font. You can go through here and find whichever font you like. Let's just pick this one here. Now obviously you can import and save if you saw back in here, you can have your own fonts where you can download and install your own fonts and save them on here. And you can also keep your recent ones there so that you don't have to keep coming back in each time. So we've got a font that looks good, how to edit. Now, what we'd like to do is to make that text stand out. We can add a background on it, which is here. So we'll enable that and come down here. We get to choose how much padding or how much border is on it. So we can increase that on either side, on the left and on the right. And if we come up to color, just come over here and hit this plus button here and that will let you add in your color. So you can either randomly pick out a color here that you like the look of, or you can come up in here to edit and you can type in the red, green, and blue numbers that coordinate with the colors for your branding or the hex code up here as well. So we cancel back out of that. Let's just pick a blue that looks close to our primal video blue, somewhere around there and go okay. So now when we pick up and move this title around, we are able to move it with the background and everything intact. If we hit the tick up here, then we are back to start making further adjustments. So we can rotate the text. We always have a little bit of an angle on it, probably something like that. Obviously you can see there's a heap more adjustments for uh, shadows and all those sorts of things and adding 3D text, you can make it 3D and uh, really do some pretty cool creative stuff in here. Even um, add reflections and those sorts of things to your text and even do things like rotate in 3D as well. So it's a really powerful app. So we'll undo that one because obviously you really want to create some sort of consistent branding. So for us, our titles look similar to this. We can then come up here to our layers again and we can duplicate this layer. So if we tap on the little edit button here for that layer, then we've got a copy button. So if we press on that, we now duplicated our layer. We'll press on this one here to hide our layers panel again. You can see we've got two copies of this. So if I'll pick it up, move it around, bring it down here, double tap to edit our text. Video is faster and okay. Now in order to make the titles look a little bit different here, our branding, we would go down here and we would adjust the background and we'd probably use a dark gray color. You can see it'll actually save your presets in here. So your two most recent colors that you use, will actually be saved there ready for you to keep using them. So we'll hit apply on that one or hit the tick. Now we come back here, probably make this one here a bit bigger. So we'll come over here to size. So what we're gonna do is increase the size of it, but we're also then gonna make the border of the box a bit smaller. So we can come back here and we can look at the background and we can lower the padding on each side around it. So just by adjusting these sliders, we're able to make it look totally different. and hit the tick when you're done. And we'll probably also adjust the rotation on this one. Rotate, let's lower that, oh, increase that back a little bit. Very touchy. Probably something like that. Hit the tick, come back here. We can pick these up and move them around to see what they look like. How to edit faster. So we're getting pretty close. So to add even more to your thumbnail images, you've also got the ability to come up here to hit the plus to add in things like stickers and shapes. So if we pick a sticker, you can see we've got a heap of little built-in shapes and, and thumbnails or clip art really. Uh, or you've also got all your emojis if you wanna bring some of those in. Maybe this one, we can then move it around, scale it up, and obviously rotate it and do those sorts of things as well. You've also got an undo button up here, which is really handy if you don't like what you've just done. So you can remove those back out, but you can also add in things like shapes. So you can see we just added a square there. If we scale this up, just to fill in half of this screen here, then maybe we'll make it even bigger. Move it over here. We'll then hit the tick up here to apply that. 
We can then come down here to rotate. We can rotate this maybe this way a bit. Bring it down here. Hit the apply button or the tick. Now we come back over here to our layers. We can move our shape down to beneath the two text layers, hide that layer panel, and you can start getting some more creative control over your image as well. So you can bring in some of these shapes to help give your thumbnail images a bit more depth or a bit more creativity really in there. You could even come down here and look at the opacity and maybe lower that a little bit, just so you're starting to see some of the background through there as well. So another thing you can do is also bring in any other graphic elements or logos that apply to the topic of the video that you're creating. So in this case, how to edit videos faster, we could bring in an Adobe Premiere logo just to have that on there as well. So we could go import over here. There's a Premiere logo that we've downloaded. We'll scale this up so that it fits and hit the tick. Now we can move this around and scale it down and work out where we'd want to put it in our thumbnail. So it could be up here in the top corner, be a bit big, or we could bring it down here, probably up here. There you go. So that's how easy it is to create your thumbnail. Once you're happy with that, obviously you can keep on playing with it. You can come up here to the three little circles and choose export image. Now to save that to your phone or to your gallery, all you need to do is press save to gallery, or you've got presets in here for Facebook, for Twitter, for Google+, and a heap of other services as well, if you wanna use them. But I'd suggest that because we've already got the right size and the right format and everything that you're after, just hit save to gallery. That's gonna save that to your phone. Because it's the free version, you will have to wait for an ad, but you can just press the X in the top corner up here. Now your image is saved and it's ready for upload on your YouTube videos. All right, so now that you've got your awesome looking thumbnail, let's make sure that you're getting the best results out of that Android camera next time you're filming. So linked on screen now is a video running through our top tips for filming on Android. And there's also a link to download the free PDF guide to filming amazing videos just using your Android smartphone. So you can grab a copy and you can follow along next time you're shooting. I'll see you next time.